Sub-Zero. guys welcome back to another destiny 2 build video it's been a while i know been really busy but we put this one together because i don't have a stasis build and uh, for those of you that don't really care about what i have to say i'll show you the build so you can figure it out for yourself this is the subclass the armor using the mask of bacris or maybe i'm scrolling too fast but i'll scroll up again you can exchange the brigands law for uh, the Ecolos, um, there's also a pulse rifle which I'm going to talk about that you can use. Oh, sorry, not a pulse, a linear fusion rifle that I think you can use. You can also exchange a gold tusk for a really cool grenade launcher. Um, so if you want to hear more about that, stick around. We're also running the Edge Scepter primarily because we want to use our super as much as possible, and I just feel this does more burst damage than the actual super. So there we have it. Let's start as per usual with the abilities. Now, obviously, can't change anything there. I'm running um, Gambler's Dodge because melee feeds into refresh of grenade and my class item. Your class ability, you need the class ability for to actually get the buff from the exotic, which we'll talk about later. Play whatever you want here. You don't have a choice here. And I'm running Dusk Field because obviously, combined with Touch of Winter, it's really, really strong. And that additional shard really helps you to get your grenade back um as soon as you can um especially if you start you know shattering crystals which feeds into a spur of shards other aspect is grim harvest so you know it's all about creating stasis shards because that does give you some overshield and that's gonna feed into survivability so we're running whisper of rhyme we're running whisper of shards we're running uh whisper of conduction so we don't have to follow around and try to pick up shards for that bit of an armor boost. We're running uh, Refraction as well because um, we want our Mask of back Backress, which feeds off of our class item, to be up as, as much as possible. And you're going to be slowing things all the time with your melee ability, with your grenade. So that is pretty helpful. And then here we've got, you gain grenade energy each time you take damage from targets. You're going to be in their face all the time. So that's going to feed into... The, uh, the the grenade recharge as well. Of course, feel free to to swap this out for uh, something else. That's just not something you know. You can you, you can do fish, fishers. Is it fishers? Whisper of fishers if you want, um, because you will be destroying a lot of a lot of um, um, you know stasis crystals, which you know is going to feed into it all. But ultimately, that's what I run because of the synergy of the build. So. Mask of Vacris. What you do with this is your shift, as you know, is replaced by like this massive, like longer dodge that's quite, you know, fast and it kind of cloaks you while you do it. After that, your arc weapons deals increased damage, which is pretty cool. That's where the weapons that we're going to use comes in. And you also deal increased damage to all slowed or frozen combatants. So what you can do is one your, your combination that you're going to throw out is one throw out a stasis shard um, it does feel grenade to create that stasis shard shift into that little area 
where there will be a lot of enemies. You're going to smash the Stasis Crystal. You're going to have the boost because of your Arc Weapon. We're going to use a sword, as you would have seen in some of the intro clips, or whatever other weapon you feel you want to use. And you're going to get you know a double boost from the slow and from the Arc Weapon damage. That's why it's so strong. We're running a double Arc Siphon because you're not going to get a lot of um, you know orbs generated. Um, or you won't, you know, be able to charge your super too much um, from the using from using your your hands-on or your power preservation or your assets to assets. Goodness, it's been a long week, guys. So uh, on the arms, we're um, it's all about you know grenade cooldown, but we're also using our um, melee attack to boost our class ability regeneration rate because we need that to get these buffs all the time and then of course also using a melee attack you reduce your grenade cooldown now remember you've got two melee charges um, so you can smack those out dodge and then you'll have another one because of what you have on your outfit um, in gambler's dodge uh, on the chest piece we are running you know arc reserves that's going to be useful and um, we're running charge up because you know we want to increase and have that stacks up as much as possible you're going to be close quarters so i'm running with melee damage resistance you know for boy and blank range now on the shoes on the leg armor i've got recuperation because remember you don't have a lot of survivability on this now you can you know spec up your fragments and things to give you some damage reduction when you're close to a shard or something like that but i felt that, that didn't save me enough from dying when I, you know, tried this in different layers of different um, scales of content difficulty. So by using your arc weapon and having two of these arc siphons, you are going to generate, you know, quite a few of these orbs, which would allow you to actually, every time you kill one or two, enemies in close proximity to give you your health back we're also at the same time allowing it to reduce our class ability cooldown so that we can phase out get the damage buff as well which is pretty helpful and then finally i'm um, on my hunter's cloak i've got um, a reaper which is going to help us create more orbs we're already a bit slow on that there's not a lot of um opportunity for us to do that and we've got utility kickstart for the same reason i mentioned earlier trying to get that class ability as soon as possible and then finally when we use our class ability because our combo is typically throwing out the dusk field shifting in damaging a lot of things getting our 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 um our class ability back and recharging our grenade because we've also destroyed the actual crystal that was in the dusk field grenade we will you know get um, our grenade and our class ability back really soon using that combo but it doesn't have to be specifically like that it can just be you know melee into shift into damage or it can be you know grenade into shift into damage and i would work pretty well let's talk about the weapons what i enjoy using and what i think is the most efficient is i've got a brigand's law with vault shot and buglist it just you know vault shot is, is really strong especially with the damage buff you get from the mask and you're also getting Pugilus. So the fact that Vault Shot and Pugilus kind of feeds off each other, you'll get your melee um, ability back really quickly, which again is going to feed into refreshing most of the things that you want refreshed. So I think that would be my number one choice. It doesn't feel very fluid playing with this though. So, I mean, it's debatable. And other alternatives, you can run the Ecolus, running Feeding Frenzy and Vault Shot for obvious reasons. You know, it's a staple pretty much in the SMG uh, subclasses. So... Um, that's something you can use and then of course you can go for the plug one now i've got a great role on this with heating up on reservoir burst if you don't know what reservoir burst does it's pretty much when your when your magazine is fully charged you get like this massive um you know damage damage kind of like burst deal additional damage and then they all explode so that works really well with the buff from this as well uh, on the heavy weapon. So I'm running the gold tusk. And the reason I'm running this is because one, unrelenting, it gives us health regeneration, which is awesome, and chain reaction. So if you kill one chap, he's gonna explode. You're gonna have the boost from the arc grenade, uh, from the from the mask of Bacris arc boost, and you're just gonna do a tremendous amount of damage. This just helped with the charge rate, so it's not massive, but I mean 
that's uh, that's just what I have rolled on it. Something that can also work is if you have a, I think it's a tireless blade, which would give you sword ammo back. But because we show light on the on the um, survivability, unrelenting combined with chain reaction would allow you, as you would have seen in the intro clips with those boosts, you know, be able to stay in the fight and as you kill, get some of your health back. Um, combining that with the regeneration and recuperation you get from actually creating orbs will keep you alive. So that is the way we go with about it. If you don't want to use a sword, I would suggest you go with a Wendigo. Um, you know, we all know that grenade launchers had a bit of a buff. I've got auto-loading explosive lights on it, which allows me to, when I pick up orbs, to do additional damage. You can, of course, also run the Thunderlord, but that's going to take away from the top slot. Because it's also an exotic which is what i'm going to talk about finally i am not the biggest fan maybe maybe debatable but i'm not the biggest fan of the super ability of the hunter stasis because of how long it takes and it doesn't feel like it's doing a lot of burst damage so you will get your super very quickly either way with all of this and being able to use the edge of scepter as you, again as you would have seen in the intro clip you can clear pretty much you know an encounter of enemies just by yourself by using this so i've got this i've got the catalyst which really helps a lot by draining super energy and it just you know destroys and melts things so there is the build guys this is my sub-zero backris build and i hope you guys have a good time now just a bit of a disclaimer before we sign off i'm not saying this is the best build in the world i'm not making builds because they're the best i'm making builds because they're fun and they're enjoyable and the same way a football player is not defined by the quality of his boots, a player should not be defined by the quality of their build. So if you don't do well in this build, maybe you do really well in this build. It might be a reflection of how you play that encounter rather than blaming it on a build. So to summarize, I'm not saying this is a GM solo build. I'm not saying it's just a normal build. I'm just saying it is a fun build and you should try it out. Try it out different content let me know how it goes and how i can improve it that will be good for me and everybody else watching this i appreciate you guys support as always take care of yourself have a great weekend and i'll see you in the next one cheers